You're too fat to wear this. Your nose is a little too big. Nobody likes a girl whose calves are bigger than the boys. I could see your stomach getting a little big and stretch marks appearing so you should probably lose a little weight. Why is she so loud for? All of these things that I have just said are statements that have been said to me by friends who became foes, by family members from aunties, uncles, and cousins, and even random people online I don't, who don't even know me. And at 18 years old, I have heard a lot of things. And these have given me countless reasons to question my individual worth, my confidence, and my value of who I am as a person. But in one of, but in one of the words of one of the, mis, the most greatest, Miss Maya Angelou, but still, I rise. <clears throat> my lolole, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Madagascar Antonana Rivo Vacapuna, aka She Disrupted, aka Scar Go Um, I'm 18 years old. I'm full Tongan, horsey gang, uh, <laughs> and I'm from Miami, Utah. So, growing up, nobody ever let me forget that I was a big girl, or I was chunky, or just I didn't fit the agenda of the majority. And I could see it in the way they talk to me, the way they look at me and everything. But it would be selfish for me to say that I am this way today all by myself. And that is not the truth. The truth is, is I am the way I am because of the women that all came before me. And I would love to highlight each and every one of them. The first person is like down near my second mom, which is my auntie Noah Matu from California. She has taught me to love my curves, to embrace my skin, and to embrace the person I am in whatever stage I find myself in. And she taught me that I didn't have to lose weight for validation. I didn't have to wear things to seek approval. She told me and she taught me to embrace and to love who I am as a person. And the second person is my auntie, Betsy Vakapuna, who is also a second mother to me, and she has taught me strength. And um, she is literally the walking testimony of doing the damn thing. Um, she is a walking testimony of never letting, never letting an inadequate situation get to her, the best of her. She is literally a walking testimony of my favorite scripture, which is Romans 8, 18. Your final destination will never be your current situation. And that's just that on that. That's on period. Mm -hmm. um, the third person is my beautiful grandmother, Manalua Wakapula. And that is a boss lady right there. She is unapologetic and fearful and fearless of who she was. She didn't let nobody talk to her crazy. She didn't let nobody walk all over her. And she subconsciously taught me to be fearless and unapologetic of my truth and who I am as a person. And then the last person is my beautiful mother, right there standing. Um, that lady has taught me how to be independent and hardworking. Every morning since she has started since she, since she was working, or when she started working, she has gotten up with no excuse at five in the morning, and she has never complained. She has taught me never to rely on anybody to get the job done. And for that, I will always love my mom. And she is everything in all those women, and so much more. I love you, mama. You, you my number one. Um, and, um, all of these women and countless others have taught me so many important things. And I am not the way I am today if it wasn't for them. So can we just give a round of applause for all the women in here? Growing up, I was just damn near built like a linebacker. I can't lie. Like, <laughs> and... <laughs> I learned to embrace everything about who I was. And my message to all the young 
women, older grown women, and other aunties, sisters, and nieces. I hope you never trade your self-value, your integrity, and the person you are for the world because these are the things that will take you and make who you are and take you far beyond and make all things possible for you. And um, I would just love to uh, give a round, another round of applause for the women. I'm sorry. Give another round of <laughs> so beautiful and um, I hope you guys embrace and love who you are don't change for nobody don't validate don't seek validation for other people do what makes you happy wear what makes you happy love and live life to the fullest and do it do it by doing you do it by doing you and I would love to share two pieces of um, two poems I have written um, and the first one first started out as an essay. And I wrote this my junior year and I performed it my senior year, which was uh, this past year. And I won second place at my school's talent show. And I just, um, it was one of the best days of my life because for me to be able to speak my truth and to have people feel empowered is what empowered me the most. And that is something nobody could ever take away from me. And it's called Strange Fruit by one of my favorite artists, Nina Simone. <clears throat> Make America great again. I said, make America great again. Hold up, I'm gonna say it again with the people in the back. I said, make America great again. They say this with a smile, in denial that racism doesn't exist. Same land your feet rest on, bones wither and soon will be gone. Trill it is that it ended in 1839. Flip and add some numbers and you got 2009. Oh, wait, nah, 2019. Tears still fresh, a tsunami being built. America, you killed my people. America, you took our culture, twisted it with your wicked lies, and slapped me in America. We didn't sleep on a bed in a house with a white picket fence. Our necks rested around a rope with a blank stare as white wicked faces glare and smile all at the same time. Roots are on flame, freedom being detained. Go back to where you came from. But aren't your trophies of entertainment being used for your convenience? All of a sudden you like the way our sacred tattoo fits around your skin. But no, really go back to where you came from. You see, my truth's gonna make you lean, but reality gonna make you think. I got brothers saving serving time for the same thing. The government's making it to a business. But officer go take some time off, clock out, don't worry. In a hurry to sweep it under the rug, the news gonna say he was just another thug. What you called ghetto five years ago is what you like now. All of a sudden you took it and made it into a style? America, home of the brave and land of the free. Wait, free for who? Free for me or free for you? Free for those who look like the founding fathers, whose skin color is white, but wait, it's not always like that. I forgot America likes diversity, right? They like color, but just not too much. Just the right kind of white, be enough to look white. America loves to take cultures, but neglect the issues and problems that those specific people face. Wear your favorite Halloween costumes and punchline jokes. The cases of pipelines being built on indigenous lands, contaminated water, children being separated from parents. You see, privilege never looked like me. Privilege never existed on my tongue, on my tongue when I speak. And when you see me, you will know. When you see us, you will know. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna explain some mountains up in here. My bad. Excuse <laughs> that. And then this is an ode to all the beautiful ladies sitting here. And this is a short poem, and it's called The Unsung Hymn of Her Creation. She glows even in a place like this. No one had prepared her for the world. It was lost, but not she. For she, for the world was black and white, but she was colorful. Too colorful, she added green to the trees, blue to the sky, and yellow to the sun. 
God took his time in her craft. She shines in the dark and glows in the light. Despite the world's intentions and standards, she still rose. Thank you and uh, God bless. Sorry, I was just about to say my testimony. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs>